Hey guys, Triple B here, and today we're diving into the world of Triple B's. We've got a new combi coming out of Obsidian Flames, and with that little red smudge in the center, we can tell it's about ready to evolve into a Vespaquin. And we got a solid Vespaquin EX out of Obsidian Flames as well. Its attack's gonna let you do 200 damage and put three damage counters onto all of your opponent's damage Pokemon, which sounds pretty good. With the help of Halucha and Gapejaw Bog, we can get that initial damage out, and Radiant Alakazam can help fine tune some numbers and move things around to make sure that we've got. Well, damage pretty much everywhere and spread it out as we need. Since it's putting out damage counters, not actual damage, it does get around Manaphy as well, making it a very effective spread deck for the current meta. All those small single prize Pokemon and pre-evolutions, they're gonna be struggling a little bit. There is a bit of an issue though. Since Vespaquin's become a psychic type, it's also gotten a dark type weakness and the overshadowing presence of Charizard EX on the ladder right now is gonna make things a little bit challenging. You get Charizard for free just by logging into the game, so they're all over the place at the moment. Vespaquin might not be the easiest deck to run currently. The other free deck, Toad Scroll, is also gonna make things a little bit difficult since if they have energy on their Pokemon, it blocks effects from attacks. Damage counters are in effect, so they'll be getting blocked. Your matchups into Lost Box, Gardevoir, and Chin Power are all looking pretty good though, so that's definitely a plus. But just a heads up, you are gonna have a bit of a tough time with some decks that will be seeing quite a bit of play just because everyone has access to them at the moment. Let's jump into the attack strategy though. So to fuel Vespuquin's hefty attack cost being three grass energy, there's two options you can go about. One is using Cherum. It's going to let you accelerate as many grass energy cards from your hand to non rule box Pokemon as you want. That means that you have to get the energy out onto your combis before you evolve them into Vespuquin because as soon as you do that, they're a rule box. Now you're just limited to one per turn. So it is a little bit of an issue and means you can't run any rule box attackers as secondary attacking lines, which is a bit of a downside. Obviously having a single prize thing that's not giving up prizes though, that is nice. The more, I guess, risk adverse build you can go for though, is what we're gonna be trying today with Fortress EX. So Fortress does let you get five grass energy from your deck and put them onto your Pokemon as you like. The trade-off is it's gonna knock itself out when it does this, giving up two prizes to your opponent at that time. We do run high counts of Iono, so giving up prizes isn't a bad thing since then we can shrink their hand size down to four. We're getting five energy out, we can set up multiple attackers, that's setting up one Vespuquin, two more energy onto another one, attach return, that's six, you have two attackers set up. Vespuquin can be doing some spread damage, we can take multiple prizes in a turn, we should be okay, but just something to keep in mind. The Fortress also being a pretty solid attacker in its own right though, it can do 120 damage to the active Pokemon and then it takes 30 less damage on your opponent's turn. So into decks like Lost Box, if we haven't set up our Vespuquins just yet, we can be taking out Cramorants, they're trying to hit us, they're only doing 80 damage, we take a few hits, and then when we decide Fortress is ready to get knocked out, we take it out on our own terms. Has to be on your turn though, do keep that in mind, but we choose to knock it out, we get that energy out, and then we've got more attackers, it's put in some work, so giving up those two prizes might not really be that much of a downside. It's definitely something worth exploring. The other thing that means is we can be charging up other rule box Pokemon like Wu Chen, which is going to help out to deal with that Charizard that's seeing quite a bit of play. Wu Chen being a grass Pokemon means that it will hit weakness into Charizard EX. Its attack does a flat 220 damage, double that to 440, you'll be taking it out pretty easy. And its first attack lets you snipe Pokemon off their bench for 60 damage for each prize card that your opponent has taken. So we knock out Fortress, we can do 120 to something on the bench. If we can see they're setting up Pokemon, like, hey, if we see they have a Charmander, we want to deal with it before it becomes an issue, we can go about it that way. Or later in the game, they've taken five prizes, we can be doing 300 damage and snipe Pokemon V-Star off their bench. Definitely a solid inclusion to have in the deck. Speaking of sniping though, we are going to be including a copy of Manaphy, so it's going to prevent things from hitting our bench. We've got some little things, the Compies, the Haluchas we mentioned earlier, as well as the Pinecos. All have less than 90 HP and Greninja is running around quite a bit still. It's still seeing play in Lost Box. Chin Pao is definitely a thing, so protecting our bench is pretty solid. Charizards can be running Delphox V, so yeah, bench protection, super relevant. And then the trainer list, it's pretty standard stuff. We've got Nest Ball, Ultra Ball, VIP Pass, set up your bench for draw supporters, Iono and Research, Boss for Gust. For stadiums, we already mentioned the Gape Job Bog. We're also going to be including two copies of Path to the Peak. So there's a lot of ability reliant decks at the moment. Gardevoir, Chin Pao, Charizard, Arceus, Lugia V-Star. If we can shut off their abilities, we're in a good spot. And once we use Fortress EX's energy acceleration, we don't really need abilities in our deck. 
does shut off your Alakazam though, so keep that in mind. If you need to move damage counters around, make sure you're doing it before you put Path in play or else you're going to be kind of hurting yourself. But to slow down your opponent, definitely a worthwhile inclusion. What's your verdict on Vespaquin though? Do you think this B is ready to sting the competition or will the current meta be a bit of a mixed bag and kind of keep it off to the side as some rogue shenanigans. Charizard EX's dominance and Vespaquin's dark weakness definitely make things a little bit tricky, but when Vespaquin works, it, well, it works. Give it a test for yourself if you're feeling a little bit adventurous, and if you want to try out the deck list, you can grab it from the description below. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up button to show support for the channel, and of course, subscribe to stay in the loop with the shenanigans. Now let's jump onto the ladder and see how these triple Bs hold up tonight. How did you come over from YouTube, Cakes? That's epic! I love to hear it. I love hearing when people are like, Oh, I found you on Twitch because like I saw your videos. I'm like, sick. That's great. Now you get to hang out live. We get, we get to have a little chit-chat. It's wonderful. How's your weekend going so far, Cakes? Oh, we are into Guardi, who loves putting damage counters on themselves. This is, this is a good matchup. Nice. Have you built any of the decks from YouTube? Like, have you tried some out? Or is it more so just like, oh, I like watching Pokemon. We don't want both of these right now. Oh, actually, maybe we do. How aggressive are they able to go on their first turn? They don't run Squawk Billy, do they? Oh, it's still Friday for you. Oh, nice. Locals tomorrow. Ooh. Is it like competitive? Like a League Challenge or anything like that? Best of luck. Best of luck. Emerald came over from Dodonzo and Torkoal. Man, those decks are fun. Torkoal is silly. I love Torkoal. I wish we had a way to reflip coins, but yeah, Pogos are just being able to go like just double it. It's fine. <laughs> Why reflip my odds when I can just double my odds? Okay, so this is concerning that they have Cresselia. They move all their damage counters. That means we're not able to do the spread. Also means they're likely gonna snipe our Pineco. And I don't want Iono them because, well, it's giving them more cards. And no offense to them, I'm sure they're a wonderful person, but nah, not about that. <laughs> yeah, let's do that. Maybe we just get an item. Oh, he's damage counters though, yeah? Yeah. I'm thinking we do that. Also wondering if we just go in with Pinecos. It takes the knockout, makes them have to really work for it and cost less energy. The Vespies though, Vespies with their spread is really good. I think we do just grab that. We won't put anything else on our bench. So we do have the Halucha play if we want it. Play this just to thin it. Play this to force them to find the counter. And yeah, let's grab that. We've got counter stadiums. They got counter stadiums. They can try and bump it to play their deck and then it lets us play ours. Or they don't and we're also in an okay spot. Not an amazing spot, but an okay spot. <laughs> Cakes, you tried the dark red deck. Oh, nice. Nice. That's awesome. Glad to hear it, Cakes. Glad to hear it. Yeah, dark red's fun. I like it. It goes really quick. It goes burr. <laughs> Emerald, the cocktail collection. Yeah. 
Yeah. Now at the new place, we have a lot of like inbuilt cabinets. So they've got like a little push to open door things. So just in our dining room area, it's a bit more stashed because we get inspections. And that was one of the things that our previous place were like, they probably think we're alcoholics. I just like having access to flavors. <laughs> it's not like I drink every single one of those bottles every day. I just want to know that it's there when I want it. <laughs> All right, well, we have that. We are giving them that back, I guess. Do I boss kill something? Like, I could boss up a Curlia, then it's one less. One less I have to deal with. One more rare candy they have to find. But killing this takes out one of their attackers, which is probably the correct play. Um, but yeah, we will counter our own stadium. Get rid of these. Grab that. How are we doing for energy? Doing pretty swell. So yeah, we will do this before we go to draw. And we'll spread it. We know there's one more in there. We can attach to that. That can be online. We can go into that as a secondary attacking option if we want. Good to have some versatility. Rick, you play this deck with Cherim, the Vespaquin. Yeah, that's not a bad shout. That is not a bad shout. Well, we didn't find our Halucha. And we did give them access to uh, their EX again. For a little bit, at least. <laughs> Yeah, this with Cherim though could definitely be a, a good idea, Rick. Good call out, good call out. Cakes, please create a Charizard Blastoise deck. Uh those are cards. <laughs> are they cards that should be in a deck together? Mm, I don't know. Cherim is a really good version with attaching to the combi. Yeah, no. Cherim would definitely be a good call out. And yeah, question of the day. What card from Obsidian Flames are you trying to make work at the moment? Emerald, you're trying to make Palafin work. Nice, nice, nice. Sven, hope sleep was nice. Yeah, no, sleep was pretty good. Sleep was pretty good. I don't think I've actually fell asleep till like 2.30, almost 3, and got up around like 8, but it's good. It's good. Uh, Rick, you're trying to post a link? What are you trying to post a link to? If you let me know, we can give you a permit. Oh yeah, we just don't want people coming in here and like spamming random stuff. So if you post a link, it will just cut everything out. Oh, They'd have another counter stadium, yeah? Like, they'd have to have Vacuum or Worker or another Artisan. There's no way that's their only counter stadium, but, like, I really hope it is. <laughs> if we can get this path to stick, that'd be so good. Oh, you weren't posting a link as your phone? Oh, weird. Very weird. Toad Scroll Re EX. Really love that card, but no easy way to make it work. And it's sad part is currently grass is really great. Green grass is really great. Grass is an okay spot. I feel like it could definitely use some more support, though, if that's what you're trying to say. Like it's tempting. Uh, do do we do this? Do 
Do we even have any more energy to justify getting any of those? No, we don't. I kind of want to do it just to thin it. But yeah, I think we just stick this down and hope that it sticks. I have an attached return. I guess I could attach to the Alakazam just in case they try and boss stall us. Iono is kind of helping them out here. But yeah, we needed Halucha. Oh, I didn't need Halucha, but it definitely helps because we go Halucha. Do you want to use it? Yeah, I, I, I think I would. We knock this out. Those are basically dead. Um, and then when they evolve to Gardevoir, I don't think they can get up to the numbers to knock us out anymore. Jay Sleepy <laughs> taking notes. <laughs> we got we got some big brain chat going on here. PTCGL Charizard smokes common, so Toad has easy times versus it. True, that is true. That is true. Leafy on V Star is also a good version of the stack. Leafy on V Star with Vespaquin. Interesting. For the next ten weeks until new decks come out. Yeah, well, not even that. Like, Pokemon 151 is, what, three weeks away? With the card being buffed with bugs, it's great. And yeah, no, Toad Scrolls... I'm not sure if it's fixed or not yet. I was looking away when the number popped up, but I know it was counting itself towards the calculations. Latest version you tried was Gardevoir version for energy acceleration, first Toad manual charge, and after that, Guardi skill plus energy recovery. Ah. Oh. Uh, yeah, 151 is like September 8th, I want to say. September 8th or September 16th, somewhere in there. It's a promo set, so it doesn't follow the regular rule of every three months. They're just like, we're bringing this out now. Okay. And I don't know that it's going to shake up the meta too, too much, but it'll definitely impact it. Like the new Charizard EX can easily be slotted into the current Charizard EX decks to be a fire attacker that comes out of nowhere and does 330 damage without needing to be giving up prizes. Pretty cool. I know people are going to try and make Blastoise work. Um, people might try and make Venusaur work. They shouldn't, but they might try to. Oh, you just trying to take out my single prizers? Buddy, you gotta, you gotta kill one two prizer. Come on. Give me again. <laughs> oh, actually, no, because then we would have been able to kill these. Now I need to get into a Halucha to kill those. Another Halucha, not you. You you already came out to play. They didn't get another Gardevoir, though, so I'm, I'm not Ionoing them. I'll show you that I could have, and I chose not to. And yeah, we kill these. <laughs> So that's fun. Do I put the Gape Jaw down? Yeah? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, but yeah, effectively, we just need to be able to knock out that Gardevoir next turn. If they bring a Zacian out, we're in trouble. But hopefully they don't. <laughs> Use Leafy on V-Star to attach energy with some experience share. Oh, uh, LDF was playing it by that way? Yeah, that's fine. It's, it's definitely a different way you could be playing it. I don't know. That's because it's... A deck? Is it a good deck? No. It's a deck, though. Like, it's definitely fun. I wouldn't be splitting hairs over, oh, how to make this, like, the most consistent build, because... With the current meta, I don't think it's Vespaquin's time. 
It could definitely become a good card, just at the moment I don't think it is. I'll be back by then to give you the buy list for 151. I will do my best. I'll do my best. Actually, yeah, Emerald, do you want to double check the release date for it? Because I think I'm off until September 10th. So I might be getting my dates confused in that sense. Like I might be thinking of when I'm off until and confusing the dates. Oh, we beat Gardevoir. Okay, cool. <laughs> and yeah, just in case I do make this into a video, if you're watching this right now, the deck is fun. It does not mean it's good. You'll have a good time playing it though. Just don't expect to go winning any League Cups with it. But yeah, fun bit of shenanigans. Thanks for sticking around to the end of the video. If you did want to see some more games, you can click onto the link right here. It'll take you to the second channel where you can see the full VOD of that night's stream. Till next time though, take care of yourselves.